so hello everyone so today we are having our new experiment for the verification of superposition theorem firstly just uh, check the superposition theorem statement here so here is the superposition theorem so it is used for complex network okay having uh, more than two or different more sources okay so it is used basically to simplify the network calculation so according to the theorem in any bilateral network if two or more than two energy sources are present so energy sources could be either uh, dc or ac okay then the current through which flows at any point is the vector sum of all current which would have been flowed at that point if each source was considered separately and all other sources would be, have been replaced by the time by the impedance equal to the internal their internal impedance Inter, their internal means the power source internal impedance as we know that uh, the dc power source if they are having any internal impedance then we will replace that dc power source by their internal impedance okay or either we will short that part and we know that uh, the internal impedance of ac source is uh, infinite so we will use to replace a open circuit okay while we will be doing the experiment with the ac source okay so basically you can see here superposition theorem could also be defined as if the number of voltage or current source are acting simultaneously in a linear current network the resultant current in any branch is the algebraic sum of the current that would be produced in it when each source acts alone replacing all other independent source by their internal resistance so this means to verify this superposition theorem suppose we are taking a complex network having uh, two different voltage source okay suppose a and b are two different voltage source okay and we are having the complex network in which uh, we are having a load of uh, we are having two to three loads suppose suppose we are having a one load of 40 kilo ohm okay so we do need to find that what is the current in that 40 kilo ohm okay so according to the superposition theorem if we will find out the current acting in that 40 kilo ohm okay when only one source is acting at a time suppose a is acting so when a is a source is acting there would have been some current in 40 kilo ohm register okay and at a time at different time we will take only b sources is acting so at that time also we will be having again a different value of uh, current in that 40 kilo ohm register so we will verify then when we will add both the current which we have found out when we have taken one source at a time then we will find that the algebraic sum of those current is same or not with that current which was the actual value which is flowing through that 40 kilo ohm when both the sources were acting okay so we will do this uh, in multisim so this i am multisim i have opened so i am going to make a simple circuit here okay i am going to take here uh, two voltages so remember in superposition theorem uh, we are going to replace a source by its internal impedance okay so the internal impedance of uh, voltage source could be just uh, replaced by the help of a short circuit okay or whatever the Im internal impedance if there is present in the voltage source and in the ac source what we do we do just uh, open the circuit in that point okay so we'll just use dc power source only for performing the experiment so one dc power source one more dc power source i'm going to use here okay now uh, i'm going to use uh, three different resistors here okay suppose uh, one one kilo ohm resistor i'm using and uh, suppose uh, 500 ohm register i am using one suppose we use a uh, two 500 ohm register okay we are done so these three things we are going to use okay we are going to make a bigger circuit here right now okay so 
now i will move this 500 ohm resistor clockwise or anti clockwise in any way you can move so this is basically the circuit here which i am forming so i do need ground also okay now i can make the circuit but for analyzing part we do need uh, emitter also okay so suppose this one is your circuit okay this one is your circuit okay so we are going to use uh, emitter okay suppose uh, emitter one would be in this part okay which would measure the current uh, through this r1 okay emitter two would be in this part for measuring the current in r2 and emitter three would be in this part for measuring the current r3 so for that thing i will firstly delete uh, these connections here i will use one multimeter here second one here and the third one would be here connect the positive to the positive terminals just move this R3 resistance little bit down okay and this one uh, I will just rotate it clockwise okay okay so these three things I have done this one is uh, multimeter one I will convert it to emitter by clicking on this A button as DC has been chosen already. Here, this would be my emitter 2, and here, this would be my emitter 3. Okay, so this is the circuit, and here both the voltage are 12 volts. So I would change the value of voltage here. Suppose uh, take here the V1 node, just take here to be uh, 20 volt and here the v2 just leave it to be 12 volt okay so now uh, run the circuit so when we have run our circuit we are seeing here values of current so currently uh, the emitter one is showing me uh, 11.2 milliampere of current that is flowing through r1 here uh, emitter two is showing uh, 500 ohms of uh, current sorry minus 6.4 milliampere of current okay 500 ohm is the register so uh, this is flowing uh, in this r2 register and this multimeter 3 is showing me the current of 17.6 milliampere okay so if you use kcl also now you will find that uh, this emitter 3 plus emitter 2 current would be equivalent to 11.2 this uh, you can see here directly so in this way kcl is has been also proved for this circuit okay so leave that kcl part now we will just uh, focus on the uh, superposition part only so we have here we have found out our three currents 11.2 17.6 and minus 6.4 milliampere so here minus 6.4 milliampere simply shows that the current is flowing in this direction okay we have used here 12 volt okay and we have connected here uh, the the negative part of this emitter has been connected in this part okay that's why it is showing the minus 6.4 milliampere of current okay that it is showing the reverse current here simply okay that means the current is not flowing from uh, left to right here it is flowing from the right to left part here in this uh, portion okay that means the current is flowing in anti clockwise direction we can say okay so these data we will uh, record uh, in a note sheet or I have just made here a observation table you could see here okay so V1 and V2 voltage firstly we will check here so V1 voltage which we have done here it was 20 volt and V2 voltage which I have taken is 12 volt okay so here the data would be of the theoretical here I have created I4 I5 or whatever 
different uh, if, if the more branches would have been there so there would have been more current in different different branches so these current are i1 i2 and i3 okay which are the theoretical one and these are the practical data which we will founding so these theoretical data okay the theoretical data would be taken by this point only okay so it not it should not be theoretical it should be practical here since we are doing the practical part okay so my i1 is 11.2 okay so all the current would be in milliampere only so i am not going to write here ma ma every time okay milliampere every time so this one is 11.2 this one is minus 6.4 and 17.6 okay so this one is minus uh, 6.4 and this one is 17.6 okay so you go here you could write milliampere every time okay or here in the in the ever part only you could write that all the current are in milliampere okay so this one is the i1 i2 and i3 when we have taken both the voltage source okay now at a time we will take one voltage source suppose at a time i am going to take here 20 volt so i will replace v2 by its internal resistance so since uh, this is one is the virtual part so we are not going to have any internal resistance here so our v2 voltage would be zero so now we are going to change our circuit and we will just replace this 12 volt here so firstly stop this circuit click on the delete button or you could right click and then delete this source just short this part okay now we will again check that what is the current here so now our current would be renamed as i1 dash for the current through r1 i2 dash for the current flowing through r2 and i3 dash for the current flowing through the r3 okay just run it now at this time just see here uh, we are having 16 milliampere of current through r1 8 milliampere through r2 and 8 milliampere in r3 so i'm going to write this thing here we are getting 16 milliampere here 8 milliampere in i2 dash and similarly 8 milliampere in i3 dash okay similarly uh, in the third part i am going to make this v1 0 volt and this v2 i am again going to take the 12 volt okay Twelve volt. Okay, so now I will check I one dash, I two dash. Ah, uh, sorry, I one double dash, I two double dash, and I three double dash. So what are these double dash? I have renamed the current. Okay, when we are going to delete this voltage source. Okay, by just shorting the circuit, and I will insert a voltage source here. Okay, of twelve volt. then the current name would be i1 double dash in r1 i2 double dash in r2 and i3 double dash in r3 okay so we have renamed our current okay so now again uh, run this so when we have run here we have found out different current here so the current in r1 is minus 4.8 in r2 is minus 14.4 in r3 is 9.6 milliampere so we will we are going to write down the datas here so minus 4.8 i am going to write here minus 4.8 milliampere minus 14.4 okay and here i think is 9.6 was there yeah so uh, 9.6 was there okay so now we'll when we will algebraically sum these two i1 dash and i1 double dash just check that whether you are getting this i1 or not so when you will algebraically add this thing 16 plus minus 4.8 yes you will get 11.2 so that means that when one voltage source was acting alone then we have whatever the value we have got okay we have add that thing and we are getting the same value of the current 
okay when we are having both the voltage source so this is true for this i1 this is true for uh, this i2 if you are going to find out again you will get again the sum of i2 dash and i2 double dash is minus 6.4 and for i3 dash also and i3 double dash also when you are going to add you are going to get 17.6 so the superposition theorem is looking good for this circuit as we have verified that uh, i1 is equal to i1 double dash and i1 dash similarly i2 is equal to i2 dash plus i2 double dash and i3 is equal to i3 dash plus i3 double dash so this means that superposition theorem hold good for this circuit so hence superposition theorem is verified so i hope you understood how to verify this theorem so thank you for watching